tell me about Bad Living Dead Live. Where did this idea come from? Okay, I guess I'll start. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, basically I came up with the idea after I saw a picture of a friend who went as a black and white zombie from George Romero's 1968 Night of the Living Dead. Him and his girlfriend had both went. As struggling filmmakers, Phil and I were looking for a project we could work on that would bring some money in, basically through ticket sales or something, because we weren't having so much luck with our films. And the fact that it takes place in, more, in a farmhouse, one location, I brought it up to Phil. I'm like, what about the idea of bringing Night of the Living Dead as a stage play? It's one farmhouse, one location, it all takes place, and we actually do it all black and white, just like the original movie, but within makeup. And he's like, oh my god, we're both huge horror fans, huge George Romero fans. Phil got it right away, and that was basically the brainchild right there. So once we'd come up with that idea and started developing it, we ended up going to the uh, Festival of Fear, the Rue Morgue Festival of Fear at the Fan Expo, of where to our surprise, John Russo and Russ Streiner had actually showed up as guests. So we got the opportunity to pitch the idea and they liked it. They actually liked the idea and they said we have to have a phone call conversation. And after that phone call conversation, we basically got the ball rolling and were given the license and the right to adapt their film into a stage presentation. And they also came on as our executive producers. They liked the idea so much. So that's basically how it came to be. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. Obviously, this theater lends itself actually quite well to this idea. Was was this the place to do it, or actually, uh, funny story behind finding this theater. Uh, originally, um, we had booked a meeting at a, another theater, but because we had email problems prior to that, a couple of days prior to coming here, we had assumed that our meeting was actually here when it wasn't. It was actually another theater across town. That's so funny. We walked in and Chris and I looked around and saw this place and we thought, oh my lord, this is absolutely yeah. perfect, amazing. This is the best spot Only to find out that we weren't actually supposed to be at this theater. We were supposed to be at another theater, but the, uh, the theater uh, staff were actually having a, a meeting that day that um, we had just been lucky enough to stumble upon because any other day we would have shown up and would have been here. So they were able to show us around, we were able to kind of pitch the idea to them and long story short, that's how we found the theater. It was it was uh, serendipity, it was absolutely amazing how it happened. So. That's cool. And seat wise and size wise, it was just what we were looking for and the unique stage that they have. Like yeah. we're going to be able to make the whole thing sort of our play area and we just loved it, how the upper part, the lower part, it was just everything we were looking for. So it was serendipitous to find the place for yeah. sure. So in terms of actually turning this into a stage production, what are the unique challenges? Obviously the, uh, the makeup is, and the, mm -hmm. the lighting that you're doing black and white is a challenge. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's How difficult. That uh, so I mean, right now we actually, uh, we saw some still images of a theater company down south somewhere in the States. And I mean, I think they've taken 10 or 12 or 300 years to refine their techniques uh, with the black and white and make that perfect. And that, that is the number one challenge is making all the lights coordinate with the tones. Uh, but we have a great design team uh, that came along, came on board. They're all theater, you know, accredited up up to the to the nines. And so you know what, them and their experience, they're working on it. We keep seeing the updates and the progress, and you know what, we leave that in their court. But it looks really good so far. And uh, now that we're getting all the makeup, uh, the kits, actually, all we're applying it to everyone. We're seeing the tones and everything. It looks great. Uh, we'd love to show you some photos. You know. You know, cool. right time. off the record, yeah. but yeah, in time, in time, we don't want to spoil anything, but uh, that's definitely probably the biggest hurdle, is mm -hmm. just making it, if you're going to do it black and white, don't do it poor, do, do it very well, don't do it poorly, sorry, yeah. uh, do it very well. I found the script too, it took a while to get the script where it is today, uh, Night of the Living Dead fans are very hardcore and they're very loyal, and they support their film and the filmmakers unbelievably, so doing a remake or some sort of take on their work can be even be dangerous sometimes to be honest with you because the fans are so hardcore. So it was like as super fans, Phil and I are diehard fans of George and Night of the Living Dead and everything and so it was our goal to make sure that it was everything the fans want but through the help of our director and other things it was creating it into a stage play so not doing the film on stage but actually making it our own and identifying it as a play and that took a little bit of time but we did well, I'm not going to say we, our writers actually came up with an awesome second act that's actually going to blow everyone away. So it makes it very original, very unique, but right on par with what night fans are looking for. Yeah, when we, when, sorry, when we first started this project, Chris and I both agreed that we had to find the right team, the right people to put this together. And the first person on our list was Christopher Bond of Evil Dead the Musical fame. Oh, yeah. 
both Chris and I, again, we're giant fans of Evil Dead the Musical, so... And Don't normally knew. like musicals, so that's why that's important, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't excited to see it, so... So anyway, um, <laughs> we, uh, we thought, hey, it wouldn't be great to get Christopher Bond on this project, being, you know, a Toronto boy, and that's where we wanted to do the play, and... Uh, Long story short, we ended up getting in touch with them. We sat down with them, sold them on the story or on the on the production, and uh, as they say, that, that's history, I mm -hmm. guess. And uh, hopefully, he he's brought an amazing team to uh, the project. And uh, yeah, were there any little elements that uh, or big elements that you know you're gonna have George A. Romero watching this? Uh, uh -huh. Were there any elements that you guys were most afraid of translating from this? The, uh, it, it's the second act. It's, second act. it's how he's going to take the second act because the first act is the film. Yeah. Uh, it's slightly different. It's changed up a little bit for stage, but for the most part, all the key stuff is in there from the film. You'll recognize it. You know the film. It's all the film. It's the second act that we love as fans, but it's that we're a little bit worried and we're a little bit worried about how everyone will take it. But I think they're going to love it because we love it. And it's like, I always make analogies for hamburgers. I, like, I can tell how great a hamburger tastes. doesn't mean I have to know how to make it. So I know that this is really great. So let's just hope that the fans agree, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the only other thing I'm wondering is, uh, you know, what do you want fans to walk away with? I understand they're in for kind of interaction, obviously. Uh, what do you yeah. want them to walk away with? Uh, not blood stains on their clothes. We're not gonna go. We're not gonna go that route. Uh, Evil Dead may have uh, went a little bit that route, but there is going to be a lot of interaction. There's going to be a lot of maybe head turning to the side because you didn't think that there was something there, but wow, it's coming right. You know, it's it's invading a little bit of that safety space that you have. It's not a horror. It's not like a gruesome, gory thing. Right. But there is a lot of looking to the side. Oh, I didn't know that was right there. That's scary. The, the, and you get those jumpy sort of things. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, you're not going to get splattered with blood. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have a cool sort of, you know, 180 degree, you know, atmosphere. You, and you, then, you're going to know what it's like to be yeah. part of a night of the living dead. Yeah. Basically, you're going to walk away with an amazing experience. It, it, it's a very interactive show and it, it actually comes a lot more from our film background. Mm. I'd seen a couple shows and they were supposed to be scary shows and it wasn't something that I really enjoyed that much and I found I was sitting in the back row and I wasn't really involved. Our, our goal for this was to make people feel like they were a part of the show and keep them on their toes. That's why zombies are roaming through the audience and other things is because you never know what's going to come back. We don't want it to be a comfortable feeling because it wouldn't be a comfortable feeling living night living dead. But at the end of it you'll definitely leave satisfied. There are some good scares, there are some good laughs. It's basically everything anyone who likes horror and theater is looking for is this, is this show. Cool. Well, last question I actually have one more is, mm -hmm. I mean, right now zombies are huge. Uh, what do you guys think is making zombies so popular? Oh, yeah, that's popular that. Popular culture, yeah. man. George uh, Romero, man. George. George Romero made zombies popular. He's <laughs> he's the king of the zombies. He's, he's the reason that this all exists and why I think our timing for the show is impeccable because it's just become such a huge part of subculture and he's the godfather and the reason that it started. So we're bringing this right back to the beginning of it. So for anyone who loves all that zombie stuff and the, everything that it is, this is the show that we're bringing to you. So... It's for George. <laughs> yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head there. Yeah, cool. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Oh, it was our pleasure.